Our story begins with Kamido, an ordinary high school boy who is minding his own business at school, when he's abruptly kidnapped by a group of muscular chads and taken to the gates of Seiken Academy. Here he is greeted by Miyuki, who has been assigned to be Kamido's personal maid, and who takes the confused boy to meet the principal of the school. That's when Kamido learns that this academy is actually an elite all-girls school that is attended by the daughters of wealthy families. However, due to being cut off from the realities of normal everyday society, many of the students here become addicted to online games and anime recaps, and ultimately become antisocial shut-ins after graduating. To remedy this, Kamido, an ordinary and unimpressive boy in every way, was chosen to teach these elite girls about the life of a simple commoner, and to help them become more comfortable around men, as most of the girls in Seiken Academy have never met a man before. But to his surprise, Kamido was also chosen because Miyuki and the principal mistakenly believe that he has a thing for handsome muscular men. But when Kamido admits that he actually likes girls, Miyuki and the principal begin to panic and decide that they will have to cut off Kamido's manhood in order to keep the girls safe. Upon hearing this, he immediately shouts that he actually adores the muscles of handsome men. And once the nut-cutting situation is diffused, Kamido is taken to his classroom, where he's immediately confronted by beautiful female students, one of which is Reiko, a perfect model student who excels in everything from academics to arts and sports. Suddenly, Kamido's cell phone rings, which surprises the other students, as they've never seen such a strange object before, and they proceed to swarm Kamido's phone to get a closer look at this alien object. Afterwards, Reiko returns the cell phone to its rightful owner, but places it in a gift box before doing so. When she then gives the box to Kamido, their hands accidentally touch, which greatly flusters Reiko, as this is the first time she's touched a man other than her father. Later that same day in the schoolyard, Aika, a social outcast who sucks at everything, pulls Kamido's hand towards her and attempts to kiss him, but he manages to narrowly avoid this brief trip to heaven. When he questions her about this strange behavior, Aika reveals that she heard from her seniors that if she kissed a man, all her dreams would instantly come true. To mock her for believing something so ridiculous, Kamido jokingly says that she also needs to roll around and bark like a dog if she wants her dreams to come true, which Aika does without even questioning it, much to Kamido's disbelief. After an exhausting day, Miyuki escorts Kamido to his room, but when the bedroom door opens, he's shocked to see that his new room is identical to his bedroom in his house, complete with his two interesting posters hanging on the walls, which Kamido begrudgingly destroys in order to hide his true desires and spare his manhood from Miyuki's dangerous snipping. Moments later, Aika visits Kamido in his room and confesses that she's rolled around over 50 times, but her dream of becoming the most popular student still hasn't come true. She further explains that she wants to learn more about the life of a commoner, in hopes that this knowledge will make other students admire her. Feeling sorry for her, Kamido finds himself reluctantly agreeing to help her, and Aika becomes the first member of Kamido's commoners club. His second day at this new crazy school begins with Miyuki right in his face, telling him she wishes he'd never woken up. Terrified of what she might do to him if she finds out the truth of his preference for women, Kamido feels compelled to just go along with his maid's antics. Later that day, Reiko decides to take Kamido to the school's cafeteria, which he remarks looks more like a five-star restaurant, with every dish having French-sounding names. So when Kamido decides to eat cup noodles, the girls are shocked to see commoner food for the first time. Wanting to share this alien food with them, Kamido explains how to prepare the dish, and then passes his only cup of instant noodles around to all the girls, with each of them only getting a small portion of noodles served on small expensive plates, and everyone finds themselves adoring this strange commoner food. Later that day at the commoner's club, Aika visits Kamido's room for very serious club activities, but ends up just having fun spending time with him while discovering new things about his alien lifestyle, like manga. Suddenly, Kamido decides to play a joke on his gullible new friend, and tells her that she actually has the ability to use the same powers as the characters in the manga she just read. Upon hearing this, Aika immediately casts a spell to stop time, and Kamido plays along by becoming motionless like a statue, and remains motionless even when Aika shows him a surprising sight. But Kamido is forced to put an end to the prank when Aika attempts to kiss him, which greatly embarrasses her. Later that night, while heading to the showers, Kamido accidentally bumps into Reiko, but she thankfully forgives him, as she knows he is only interested in muscular handsome men. However, Kamido is starting to find it increasingly difficult to keep his true desires secret. And to make matters worse, being seen by another man causes Reiko to feel that she is no longer pure and that she must now become Kamido's wife. And the next day in class, Reiko finds herself completely unable to focus, as the only thing on her mind is her future fiancé. 
A few days later, Kamido comes across Hakua, a young-looking girl who is writing mathematical equations far more complex than he can ever comprehend. Intrigued by her, Kamido decides to invite her to the commoner's clubroom so they can talk. There, he treats her to some ramen which she likes a lot, and Hakua slowly begins to like Kamido almost as much as the free alien food. He then takes her back to her laboratory, where he watches her work and realizes that despite her appearance and attitude, Hakua is far from being a little child. And to his surprise, Kamido learns that Hakua is the same age as him, and that she's actually a super genius, much like me of course. But when Hakua's maids reveal to Kamido that she's taken a liking to him, the poor commoner finds himself hoping that this doesn't make his life become any crazier than it already is. Unfortunately for him, his life does get crazier as he soon runs into Karen, a short-tempered girl who is very skillful with a sword. But rather than ask to see the manager, Karen attacks Kamido and slashes her sword with such strength that the clothes of everyone nearby is ripped to shreds, with Kamido not being spared from the same fate. However, Kamido manages to overpower Karen by accidentally revealing his manhood, and ultimately wins the fight. Afterwards, a flustered and defeated Karen declares herself as Kamido's servant, until the day that she's strong enough to kill him in a fight. And after an overly eventful afternoon, Kamido finds himself even more exhausted than usual by the antics of the students of this elite school. And Kamido suddenly finds himself with two new girls in his room, both of which declare themselves new members of the commoners club. But despite being as short-tempered and angry as her name implies, Karen shows her gentle side by quickly growing quite fond of the little Hakua. A few moments later, a waiter drops off a box containing cell phones that Aika plans to use to become popular, and she immediately tries to take a selfie. But upon seeing the results of the photo, Aika surprisingly praises herself as being very attractive. And at the end of the day, the four of them decide to take a group selfie together to commemorate their new friendship. And Karen finds herself becoming more and more obsessed with this weird alien selfie machine. Some time later, Reiko invites Kamido to a tea party as she supposedly wishes to have a nice chat with him but Kamido declines her offer as he had already made plans with Aika. Meanwhile, Reiko is at her tea party with friends, but while the other girls are having fun, Reiko is still bothered by Kamido's refusal and ends up accidentally taking her frustrations out on her friends. That night, Reiko regrets how she treated her friends and laments how she can't seem to become as close to Kamido as Aika is. The next day at school, Hakua distributes cell phones to everyone in class for free, so that everyone can communicate better with each other, and so that Aika's master plan to finally make some real friends can come closer to fruition. In class however, Aika notices the weird mood between Reiko and her friends, and she decides to help Reiko out by suggesting her to host a party. But Aika's antisocial behavior is misinterpreted as rudeness by Reiko, and the two girls begin to bicker and fight. During this heated moment however, Reiko learns of the existence of a commoner's club, and, wanting to follow up with her dream of one day marrying Kamido, insists on also becoming an official member of the club, which Aika is heavily opposed to. Regardless of Aika's feelings however, Reiko still becomes an official member of the club. But as the club activities are underway, Miyuki visits Kamido's room and is rather displeased to see so many girls in his room at the same time. This leads Miyuki to once again threaten to snip Kamido's manhood with her giant scissors, and the poor Kamido has to once again embarrassingly pretend to be attracted to muscular men. But the girls of the club are starting to grow suspicious and begin to question his true preferences. The next day, Kamido wakes up only to surprisingly find Hakua laying next to him. But when Hakua's stomach growls, Kamido offers to cook her commoner food for breakfast, and settles on cooking potato cakes for her after she agrees to eat whatever he makes. But while cooking together, Hakua ends up removing her clothes again, and starts scribbling notes on the wall, much to Kamido's annoyance. In the end, Hakua turned out to not be that big of a help with cooking, but the potato cakes still turned out to be a success, and she loves eating them. After they're done eating, Kamido takes Hakua back to her lab, and is surprised to find a plushie of himself in her room, which leads an embarrassed Hakua to push Kamido out. Meanwhile, the other girls, jealous of how close Hakua is to Kamido, attempt to become closer to her so she spends less time with Kamido, but she seems completely disinterested in everything they try, and the girls are eventually forced to accept defeat. Some time later, Seiken Academy arranges a trip for the students to safely experience commoner life on a custom-built land. The land has normal shops and streets just like regular Japan, so that the students can understand the essence of living in the real world, as well as handling simple situations like crossing the street and ordering food at commoner restaurants. But while walking around, Kamido finds many flaws in this place, compared to the real Japan that he's experienced. He decides to ignore these flaws however, and instead encourages the girls to try ordering their own food. 
He even tells Aika exactly how to order her food, so she can gain admiration from her classmates. However, things don't go quite as planned, as Aika begins to panic. But by the end, both Reiko and Aika gain confidence by ordering food by themselves, which impresses the rest of the girls in their class, who all decide to follow their lead. And as the school trip continues, the class visits more commoner places to have fun at, like an arcade, where Reiko surprisingly manages to win a doll from a crane game, which makes her very happy. Meanwhile, Aika's time to shine finally arrives as she's able to teach other students how to play the various games at the arcade, which she learned from all the manga she read in Kamido's room, and her knowledge and performance ends up greatly increasing her popularity among the students. This encourages Reiko to challenge Aika to a two-person game, but the two actually end up bonding more and more as they play, and Reiko and Aika finally become good friends. Later that day, Kamido spots Karen looking at a dress in front of a mirror, but she's too shy to try it on. Realizing that Karen is secretly afraid of his non-existent fighting skills, Kamido manages to convince her to try on all kinds of clothes that she secretly likes. And when Kamido compliments her, Karen is shocked to learn that he finds her attractive, leading Karen to strike Kamido and run away in embarrassment. The next day, Kamido wakes up another morning to Miyuki's face, who once again wishes that he had never woken up. Meanwhile, Hakua misses Kamido a lot while he's on the school trip, and her maid tries her best to console her, but to no avail. When Kamido finally returns to the academy however, it's revealed that Miyuki has been waking Kamido up with a kiss every morning, which is the real reason why she kept wishing for him to never wake up. Some time later, Kamido introduces Aika to a fortune-telling game on his phone, and Aika gets rather amused by the existence of such a thing. The girls gather again at the commoners club and decide to give the app a try, and quickly become obsessed with it. After the app accurately explains each girl's nature and personality, the girls compete in a relationship rating game to find out which of them would be best suited to one day marry Kamido. The first to try is Aika, who is ecstatic to get 80 points out of 100. Reiko goes next, and quickly humbles her down after getting 90 points, and continues to mock Aika until Karen accepts to give it a try, and ends up getting angry at Kamido when she gets a rating of 0. However, it turns out that the game malfunctioned, and that Karen and Kamido's compatibility is actually a perfect hundred. This makes the rest of the girls incredibly jealous, and they now start acting as if the app wasn't working in the first place. Meanwhile, Hakua tries the app as well, but her compatibility with Kamido turns out to be 50, which makes her quite disappointed. The next day, Kamido is once again awoken by Miyuki's lips, but this time he asks her if he could wake up to an alarm clock from now on. This request immediately angers Miyuki, and her reaction makes Kamido have another manhood threatening experience with her. Later that same day, Karen invites Kamido to her room, on the pretext of repairing a shirt that she had actually secretly damaged on purpose. Upon entering her room, Karen immediately changes into the clothes Kamido had convinced her to buy during the school trip. And as the two become closer and begin to bond, the other girls ruin the mood by barging into the room, forcing both Karen and Kamido to hide in the closet, where Kamido ends up getting uncomfortably close to Karen. This doesn't last long however, as they are soon discovered by the other girls. And to save face, Kamido lies and pretends that he was simply wrestling with Karen, which he tells them is a normal commoner pastime, and this unfortunately leads to Aika trying out real wrestling techniques on him. The next day, Hakua feels bad after the recent compatibility test, and is depressed due to it. So she decides to invite Kamido over to spend some time together, so she can get to know him better. And when Kamido agrees to come over, Hakua's maids plan out multiple ways to somehow get Kamido closer with Hakua. This works for a little while, and things are sort of going just as planned, until Miyuki arrives and puts an end to their little date. At the end of the day however, the maids are still satisfied with having brought Hakua and Kamido closer together. Some time later, Reiko overhears Kamido talking on the phone to his friends, and saying how much he misses them. Reiko misinterprets this as Kamido wanting to leave the academy due to missing being around muscular males for such a long time. To prevent him from leaving, Reiko tells the other girls about this, and they decide to help satisfy Kamido's urges by dressing up as dudes themselves. This doesn't really work out as they were expecting however, but in the end, Kamido reassures them that he was just missing his friends, and that he has no plans to leave the school, which is a huge relief to the girls, who have grown very fond of him. A few days later, Kamido and Reiko are having a good time together in the classroom, when they're suddenly summoned to a meeting. Once they arrive there, they're shocked to see Reiko's mother and brother, who don't really like the closeness developing between Reiko and Kamido. Reiko's mother then reveals that Reiko's marriage has been arranged with one of her business partner's son, and she tells her daughter to leave the academy so she can attend a meeting with her future husband. 
Reiko is obviously distraught by this news, and even the other girls feel devastated by this when they learn about it from Kamido. But since it's Reiko's family matters, the club feels it inappropriate to interfere, until Reiko's brother later reveals that he wishes to put an end to this arranged marriage. Reiko's brother then takes the group to the house where Reiko is meeting her future husband. But it's surprisingly heavily guarded by armed men. Without hesitation however, Karen uses her sword skills to deal with the guards, while Reiko's brother faces off against his martial arts instructor. The rest of the club head inside, and Hakuo assists Kamido and Aika by hacking the security systems. And they even receive help from Hakuo's maids, and the muscular men who kidnapped Kamido, and they manage to reach the meeting room just in time to plead with Reiko's mother to call off the marriage. Seeing Kamido stand up for her, encourages Reiko to decline the marriage as well. However, Reiko's mother warns her daughter that she will be disowned from the family and lose all her money if she declines the marriage. But Kamido backs her up, by saying that he will take care of her instead. However, Kamido's message gets misinterpreted as a marriage proposal, which completely shocks the other girls. But they end up even more shocked when Reiko's mother agrees to Kamido's unintentional marriage proposal, making Kamido Reiko's fiancé. To make matters worse for him, Reiko's mother mentions that she's allowing her daughter to marry him so she can torture him daily until the day he's forced to divorce Reiko. After all this, Reiko is successfully saved, and the commoner's club returns to normal, but Kamido finds himself with even bigger problems now that he's somehow engaged to Reiko. And even after he explains the misunderstanding that led to this situation, Reiko still believes that she will someday marry Kamido, despite his supposed love of muscular men. Thanks for watching another anime recap, and I hope to see you again soon.